Hey everybody out there, this is Seto, and today for you guys we're going to be talking about this card right here. Pot of Desires, or Pot of Cupidity as it was called in the TCG, or the OCG, excuse me. Now, the card effect is simple enough. Banish the top 10 cards from your deck and draw two cards. Now, originally I wasn't going to make this video. I was going to make this video actually, and then I decided not to make it. And then I turned around and thought about making it again because I heard other players kind of, I, I heard similar opinions to what I was doing and I didn't feel like I was alone on the opinions. I, I had a feeling I wasn't, but nobody was saying anything. So I waited to now to do this video and talk about my thoughts on pop desires, the pros, the cons, whatever. So first off, we're gonna go over a couple things here and this will be, have a different things we're talking about pop desires, the pros and cons of the card. First off, I compare it to two Pacific old school cards. Well, not old school, but cards that are recent and old. Number one, Car of Demise. I compare it a lot to Car of Demise. And the second card I compare it to a lot is Six Cents, a card that's now currently banned and was broken, but I sort of compare it to Six Cents in some way. The other thing I really feel like is the Yu-Gi-Oh! Yu community as a whole is really divided on the issue of this card. Is it a good card? Is it a great card? Uh, is it a bad card? You know, what type of thing is it? Well, the three camps I see is the people that say you run it as a three of or you run it as a two of in every single deck out there. The people that say it's a broken card, it, it, it's an okay card, you know, you, you don't run it in every single deck, but it's good in, you know, certain decks. Then there's the people that say it's just a trash card, you know, because it's a nay, whatever, you know, ten card, whatever. Those are the three camps in the game of the year, right this moment before any YCS has taken place uh, so far for the new season. And we haven't seen this card in action uh, for any YCS. Now, we can look to the OCG and see that they will run it in many decks. But as you should also understand, OCG mentality is very different from TCG mentality. Over there in OCG, they just said, put card design, it's a two plus two, put it in everything. Over here, it's not so cut and dry. And this is not the first time I can honestly say that that has been the case in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh. Even look at Worlds. Look at the way they built their Blue Eyes decks. Look at the way they did everything differently. Look at the way they built their decks. It's completely, utterly different from what we do over here in the TCG. Not saying the OCG is better, not saying the TCG is not bad or better. But the mentality, the mindset is completely different because it's two different things. And that's honestly been the case for a long time in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh's history. There's been other cards that have come out where T OCG played it, TCG didn't play it. And they came out very closely in time lengths of when they were released. So, first thoughts. Why do I compare it to Card of, Desire, uh, card of, card of Desires? There's a new card name for Konami. Card of Demise. Why do I compare it to Card of Demise, really? Well, the main reason is I feel like it's a niche type of card. It's not a card you run in every single deck like everybody's been trying to tell me. I feel it's a cer it's a, in certain decks it can be very good. In other decks it's not good. Same thing with card, uh, card Demise. Why do I compare it to Six Sense? Well, let's go with that first off and go a little bit of history. Now, when Six Sense came out in Joey's Legendary Collection three years ago, um, it was a card where it was definitely running Dragon Rulers because you could get benefits off of it. Now, Dragon Rulers, by this point in time, Six Cents have been released, have been neutered slightly. The Big Daddies were still at three. The Babies had been aborted. People ran Six Cents in every single Dragon Ruler deck because the fact of the matter was you either drew six cards or you milled six cards and you, you could get benefits off those cards being in the graveyard. Okay? So you, it was an auto-win type of card there. I know that is not compared to card, card of uh, Pop Desires as much, but there is a slight thing there. That's not what I'm getting at. The same mentality that people decide back then were in the decks that did not run Six Cents. So people believed it was such a powerful win condition card that you should run it in every single deck. I mean every single deck. I saw Gravekeepers running this card. I saw Harpies running Six Cents. I saw, I mean Harpies I can understand because you could go off a hysteric party, but I saw decks that had no business running Six cents, running six cents, because the fact that it was an auto win card. 
Other people said you shouldn't run it in every deck because if you mill and you mill something you need, you're out of luck. Granted, milling is a lot better than banishing face down. I will admit that. But that mentality is what I'm talking about. That mentality that players had that some people believed it was a great broken card, some people believed it was a good card, and you could run it in certain decks very well, like Light Swarms and everything, on the side that were not meta, you know. And then people say it was just, mm, it was a good card, but it was, uh, you know, type of thing. That mentality is very similar to what we feel like right now with Pod Desires, I feel like. Now, maybe the YCSs would change this, and I wouldn't be surprised that Pod Desires shot up to a $7 card because somebody talked with it in a YCS in the next week or two when the next two YCSs come out. And the card shopped to $70 overnight, and everybody's saying it's the next, be the next, next best thing since sliced bread. I wouldn't hesitate to say that may happen, because it probably will. However, my feelings of Pod Desires, as I get to it, is I'm in the camp where it, it's, a, it's a niche card. It, I feel like it's a niche card. It's a good card. And don't get me wrong, drawing two is good. Good. Got it? I'm not saying it's a bad card. But I don't feel it's a card I would run in every single one of my decks, especially combo-oriented decks, or decks that revolve all around the graveyard, or need their key pieces. So, for example, I would not run it in Burning Abyss. I would not run it in freaking, you know, Chaos Max Blue Eyes Chaos Blue Eyes Chaos Max Dragon deck because if I banish, you know, one vanilla, that can be the difference in a duel for me losing or winning. So, saying that. People have been also saying I should run in Blue Eyes White Dragon deck. Well, the way I play my Blue Eyes White Dragon deck, I like sending my dragons to the graveyard and not banishing them face down because I like getting the effects off of them. And Return of the Dragon Lords and Silver's Cry is broken with combo plays. Don't want to mess up with that. Deck seems fine without it. I tried it back in July and June just to see how it would work online. I didn't like it. I found that the deck functioned better without Pod Desires, but that's just me. That's the way I play the deck and it works for me. If you want to run it that a different way, you have to build a deck. If you want to run Blue Eyes a different way, well, then you better run Blue Eyes White Dragon a different way than I've been running it because it ain't going to work. i tell you that much. You have to run three of just about everything. And that's the problem. I have had people insane, and I also hear this too, is I feel it's a good card in certain decks, like Card Demise, back on Card Demise here. Card Demise, you wouldn't run in every single deck, would you? A heavy monster deck, would you run Card Demise? Our card demise? No. If it's a heavy trap deck? Yes. If it's a deck that revolves around floodgates? Yes. If it's a deck that has low monster count? Yes. But do I run it in every single deck? No. Do we see card demise being run in every deck? No. We do not. Also, I personally, on a personal note here, I feel card demise is a little bit better than pod duality. I mean, pod of, not pod duality, pod of cupidity, but I'll get into that later. Um, my feeling is here that card of a uh, pot of cupidity is good in certain decks that run staple three O's. However, it's up to the player if they want to do that. Pod desires ask you the question: Do you desire so much to draw two cards and go off, or do you desire to draw two cards and maybe just banish all the cards you really needed and you didn't draw anything, or you drew into another desires and gosh forbid if that happens, it's kind of a waste and then you say oh well and people say that's the worst case scenario well ratios may speak otherwise but I'm not gonna lie I have seen and I've heard and I've read on Facebook and I've read on a, lot, a whole bunch of forums that people are getting carved desires they're drawing it and their cards are sticking together I mean there's a whole bunch of factors it's not all about ratios which I agree it is but it's not all about ratios because the fact of the matter is cards stick together even if you switch your cards out certain rarities I've always noticed even if I switched out when I went to regionals and everything and every single round or every freaking time I switched out my cards sometimes they had the tendency to stick together you know and the problem with that is if they stick together more likelihood you're gonna banish them all and then you'll get the creek without a paddle so ratios do account for a thing if you're playing like on Dev Pro and Yu-Gi-Oh Pro because that thing sh those suffering systems try to you know, be mathematical, but in real life, it's a lot different story. It's not all cut and dry numbers. Numbers can lie. Believe me, I took statistics class, and believe me, they can lie. And that's one thing I'm trying to say. Mathematically, yes, it does sound perfect. 
in theory, you know, in theory it sounds great. The numbers, you draw five cards, you know, your ratios are what, 10, if I banish three, you know, banish one, banish two, you know, whatever. But in theory it's different than real life practice, which is very true for many things in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh. Vinamanaga, a great broken card. Is it a great card that I run in every deck? No, because it's hard to summon. Theorio versus numbers. Kind of in that aspect, I feel is the problem where people are overanalyzing pop desires and trying to break it down to a mathematical formula. Where really, yes, that works in theory, but in practice, it does not because certain external factors affect it. Whew, got that out of my chest. I felt really bad when people started just throwing numbers all over the place. Also, I feel that in some way, it's not. It's like I said, it can be run in certain decks. A three of, I am not really keen on. A two of, like you're starting to see in the OCG, they've cut it down from three of to two of in mo many decks. At the same time, I've seen players here and that I know run it as a one of in a lot of different decks that are, they're not combo oriented decks, but they, it doesn't hurt the deck. You know, banishing 30 cards theoretically is not good. Banishing 20 cards can be a problem, especially if your deck searches out a lot you may find yourself down to a slim minimum of cards and you banish the good cards you needed already. One it as a one of means that if I draw an opening turn and I search all my cards out, it's great. It can maybe even unclaw brick hands, but if you get a brick hand, a paw of desires, you get a paw of desires and a brick hand, it's not good. It's not good juju. It's not, believe me, I've had that happen with blue eyes. It's not fun. But it's a good card as a one-up because if you draw it early and you get a good hand, it's good. If you draw it late in the duel, you only have to banish 10 cards and you probably have 10 cards. And what's there to lose? You know, you may win the duel, you may lose the duel. But those two cards can be the difference. And as a one-of, in certain decks, I am okay with that. I am all for it because I've seen my friend Suji run it like that. And I've seen other players run it like that. And I like it. Two of and one-of I think is better, not three. Heck no. However, if your deck can make Omega consistently, go ahead and do it. Because I know Omega and Necroface work with that, but you have to build decks specifically to do those things. And if, you're, if you can do Omega easily and, and you know, be able to push out Omegas, go right ahead and do that. I also didn't want to invest in the card too because I feel like it's going to get a reprint in either 2017 Megatons or like a lot of what happened this year with a lot of cards, it may get reprinted in the Gold Series and be like a $10 or $15 card. So ratio, a card I'm wishy-washy on. Do I pay $50 or wait a couple months and buy it for $15 to $10? Yeah. You understand the math there. So those are some of my thoughts. I also feel like, like I said earlier, card demise is a little more useful, but that's a different video for a different day. I'm not going to go into that. But I think the card's good. I will never say a plus two is bad. But I don't agree with people that say by milling 10, you know, by sending, banishing face down 10 cards, that's a neg. No, and I won't agree with people that say that's thinning out your deck because technically if, when I've always thought as a player in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh, if I'm thinning out my deck, I'm sending cards to the graveyard to use their effects and use the graveyard as my second hand. Banishing 10 cards, I really have no interaction with those 10 cards. Yes, that is thinning out your deck theoretically, but you can't touch them. You can't touch this unless you got Omega or Necroface. That's not thinning out your deck. That's just drawing two cards and banishing ten cards that can cause problems. So those are just my thoughts on it. I am I like the card, but I wouldn't run it in every single deck. And if you're gonna run the card, you have to run the deck efficiently. Now I've heard people say, and I know the OCG did this, and people are gonna do this probably. I've seen people build 45 and 50 card decks just to run three card desires. Or pod desires, excuse me. And I don't agree with that because, number one, the card is really not searchable. And you're making your deck more inconsistent by running more cards, first off. And third off, it's not searchable, inconsistency, because you're adding more cards just to hopefully draw more cards. So I'm adding a, a card I can't search and I hope to draw with more inconsistency. It's just, the math there just like boggles my mind. I don't agree with that, you know. I run more cards just to search, you know, to, in the hopes of drawing a card that is non-searchable just because it's that broken. I don't think it's that level of broken. I think it's good. I think it's a niche, just like Card Demise. But I wouldn't run it in every single deck, and hopefully some, you know, we'll have to see what happens. I feel like competitive players and YCS tops are gonna run a Card Desires. But do you think they're gonna run it in every single deck? Probably, 
that's the way I think some camp people are steadfast on this card being the most broken thing ever. But I, as a player, and the decks I play, and the way I play, I do not run it. I would not run it. I literally sat for an hour, a couple hours, the last couple of weeks, even before Dark Illusions came out, and I said, what decks would I play this in right off the bat? And I said, none, because I couldn't think of any. I, I literally went through, I was like, I thought I spent time thinking about it, and I was like, I thought of every possible scenario, every possible deck, Hypothetically, I tested it out in my head and in real life for two months. Mm, I wasn't too keen on it. That's just my thoughts, though. Those are my thoughts on Pod of Desires, Pod of Desires, and what my thoughts are on it. Because a lot of people have been asking me about it, and I know people have been talking about it in the community a lot. And those are just my thoughts. And it felt good to get this off my chest because I don't think it's the next broken thing ever. There's, there's, a, there's far more broken cards out there than if you do. But they're niche type of cards. Whatever. I'm done making this video. But till next time, guys, take care. Have fun dueling. Good luck dueling. And tell me what your thoughts are about Pop Desires. And I hope you enjoy this video and my thoughts on it. And yeah, take care, everybody.